Let's focus some attention on the forms and functions of calcium within plants. So when plants take up calcium, they take up calcium as a calcium ion, calcium two plus. In plants, calcium is highly important for structure and the permeability of cell membranes or preventing the permeability of cell membranes. And calcium is also essential for cell elongation and division. And so you see some of the effects of no calcium addition to this looks like a bean, maybe soybean or just a common bean, a dry bean. You see some curling of the leaves because of lack of structure for the cells. And then you actually see something happen with, with the terminal bud and lack of growth. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. So these two points tell you a little bit about what you might see in terms of deficiency symptoms when you observe a deficiency symptom, which is rare, to be honest with you. So when calcium is lacking, that weakens cell membranes and increases cell wall permeability, resulting in loss of cell contents. And what you see is some curling of leaves, and sometimes it can be very significant. This is not that significant at all, but you do see some curling of leaves here. And when calcium is deficient, it results in poor development of terminal buds, of shoots, of like you see in this picture here, right? So this is the terminal bud and it is either malformed or it's not growing at all. And the same thing happens below ground at the apical meristem at the tips of roots. And in fact, when the calcium is deficient, it actually shows itself in terms of poor development on fruit that you'll see in a minute. So other forms and functions of calcium. What does calcium do? Calcium and magnesium actually are rather complex in soils. So calcium actually regu regulates the uptake of other nutrients. So for example, the uptake of potassium equals relatively the uptake of sodium when calcium concentrations are low. But potassium uptake greatly exceeds that of sodium uptake when calcium concentrations are adequate. And this is interesting to note because sodium is not needed for plant growth. And so why would a plant take up sodium? A plant may take up sodium in excess or a, maybe not even in excess, but above that that might be considered detrimental when calcium concentrations are low. When calcium concentrations are fine, potassium uptake is fine. Calcium actually enhances the uptake of nitrate and it influences the metabolism, metabolism of nitrate within plants themselves. I can tell you that calcium deficiencies are rarely observed in the field because other toxicities are more often observed. For example, when a calcium deficiency is observed, we typically see this under low pH conditions and aluminum toxicity actually is observed. We'll talk a little bit about that in this unit. So specifically, when uh, crops are young and their root system is still developing, they may simply have a more difficult time in taking up calcium, right? And this may be exacerbated by dry conditions. And why do I say this? I say this because if you recall from our discussions on soil plant relationships, that calcium is delivered primarily to the root via mass flow, which requires water, or root interception, which doesn't require water. But mass flow delivers a lot more calcium to roots then root interception. So small rooting systems that don't see most of the soil and under dry conditions, you might see a calcium deficiency. Although to be honest with you, you more than likely would see a potassium deficiency, but it's not unheard of to see a calcium deficiency under those conditions. You should also know that some crops are simply more prone to deficiencies. 
peanuts, tomatoes, for example, that really sticks out in my mind. And then, of course, some others. <laughs> 